I'm not showing the bonus torso pick. I think people have been nauseated enough by Judge Angoron's nipples. Oh, God. Uh, this is Judge Angoron, the judge in the um, Donald Trump, New York, Leticia James. She hasn't been doing her daily updates anymore. Maybe she finally got, you know, wind to the idea that it's this terrible, stupid idea. That's Judge Angoron, the judge in the New York case. He's the same judge who in two, uh, 2016, give or take, gave a speech to some aspiring journalists about what it's like to be a judge, all the tools he has to bypass jury verdicts if he doesn't like them because juries get it wrong a lot. Uh, judgment notwithstanding a verdict is one of the tools. He's a judge who boasted about the fact that is he following the law or is he making the law? You know, he's a judge. He's a human. He's got his biases. And he's got tools that allow him to put them into, uh, implement them. He's the judge that gagged Donald Trump from speaking about his, um, his uh, top clerk, his special clerk, the one who's you know, sending him love notes all day long about the trial, uh, a clerk who's chummy chummy with Senator Chuck Schumer, who proudly boasted how Trump had better get smart because the FBI's got six ways of Sundays from getting back at you if they don't like you. Oh, you're just, just par for the course level corruption in the world in which we live. Engeron fined, uh, yes, fined, not found. He finded, he finded Donald Trump Twice under the gag order, 5,000, 10,000, they're appealing that gag order. He gagged Trump's attorneys from speaking ill about his staff and his uh, number one love clerk, uh, Greenfield, I think is her name. Um, not only did he gag the attorneys, but when Alina Hubba, Trump's attorneys, came out after one of the days in court when Trump testified and spoke her mind about the unhinged Engoron, Engoron's wife took to Twitter through an account that has now since been locked down and tweeted out uh, nasty things about uh, Alina Hubba. This was discovered by Laura Loomer, uh, who broke the story. When I had Marco Polo on Friday, he confirmed, yeah, it's, it's the, the account used to create that account linked back to Engeron's wife's email address. And they knew this because there was a leak a while back and they could, they could link things up. Unbelievable. Judge Engeron's kid, Ian Engeron, from what I understand, has been sitting in the courtroom. Apparently is something of an activist. Uh, I, apparently he's been the beneficiary of some nepotism from his corrupt father, all of whom are pursuing this case brought by Leticia James, who campaigned off of persecuting Trump in 2018, called him an illegitimate president, uh, suggested he was laundering foreign monies from Russia, Eastern Europe. So that's the, that's the backdrop of all of this. Uh, and, you know, Barnes and I have been talking about it every Sunday. I've been railing against it because it's, 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 it's corruption that is discrediting of systems. And I'm saying, why isn't anyone doing anything about this? And finally, it looks like someone has done something about this. Elise Stefanik has filed a complaint against the judge for judicial misconduct in her personal name, not in her capacity as a congresswoman. And we're going to read through it very briefly because it's a thing of beauty. Hold on, before we do that, I'm just going to tease everybody a little bit. Let me just make sure I'm not forgetting anything here. Bonus torso shot. I'll bring, I'll bring it up afterwards, Irish Marine. Not that anybody wants to see a, a shriveled old man's body. It's so disgusting. And by the way, it's not, it's not like, for anybody who doesn't know, you didn't see it last week, it's not like a, a beach shot. It's not like he's at the beach. It's not like he's uh, sending it to a friend who then leaked it. He unsolicited posted it to his alumni art webpage thing, whatever it is, his alumni newsletter that has, you know, I presume people as young as 16 on it, after having bragged about all of his judicial successes in persecuting Eric Trump recently. He's like, hey, look at what I did to Eric Trump. Tell me I'm good, guys. You love me. Uh, here's another article of one of my rulings that really screwed Trump hard. Oh, yeah. And here's a bonus torso shot of my disgusting shriveled body. Nothing. It's actually like a healthy old man's body. A lot of people say I'd like to look like that when I'm 150. He's 78 years old. Just totally unsolicited, totally inappropriate. So it's not like, it's not like part of a progress for a Weight Watchers ad, to put it that way. Okay, that's where we're at. Let's see what Elise Stefanik has to say. Let me, if I bring it up like that big, oh yeah. Oh yeah, it fits the screen. Nice, okay. Elise Stefanik, Glen Falls, New York. Okay, whatever we got all the, yeah. Judicial complaint against Judge Arthur F. Engelron. Dear commission members, so beautiful. I write today to express my serious concern about the inappropriate bias and judicial intemperance shown by Engeron in New York's lawsuit against Donald Trump and the Trump Organization. The judge's bizarre behavior has no place in our judicial system where Engeron is not honoring the defendant's rights to due process and fair trial. This is going to be 
a much better summary of the outrageous political bias in this case than I gave. Serious concerns exacerbated by the fact that the defendant is a leading candidate for the president of the United States. Uh, it appears that the judicial system is being politicized uh, to affect his campaign. Simply put, Judge Enron and Goron has displayed a clear judicial bias against the defendant through the case, breaking several rules of New York Code of Judicial Conduct. Put this on blast. I'm going to share the link with everybody. Last year, before the trial that began, from what I understood, Angeron told President Trump's attorney that the former president is, quote, just a bad guy, end quote, who Democrat New York Attorney General Letitia James, quote, should go after as the chief law enforcement officer of the state. And it's footnoted. I love this. It's so good. In a Huffington Post article. At the start of the trial, Angeron infamously smiled like a buffoon, like he was starring in a sitcom. After the defendant won an appellate ruling against Engron on the appropriate statute of limitations in this case, the judge simply ignored the ruling. Am I making the law or am I, sorry, am I following the law or am I making the law? Oh, it sounds like he's making the law here and I've got, I've got tools. Just ignore, ignore what the court said. Judge Engron entered a summary judgment against the defendant before the trial even began without, this is on the fraud of Mar-a-Lago. I talked about this at length. Summary judgment mean that there, means that there's no, Set aside the fact that there's no jury trial for this because uh, allegedly, as this talking point goes, Trump's lawyers didn't check that box off. That's bullshit. This is a, a type of um, not disgorgement equities claim that uh, is not is not susceptible. Allegedly doesn't go to a jury trial because it's um, there's a procedure 6912, whatever it is. And there's been case law that settled it already. And sure, they could have litigated it, but I'm sure it would have resulted in absolutely no difference. Um, equities. I think it's called equities is why this doesn't go to jury. If you, if you know, whatever rights be damned. Um, but the judge entered a summary judgment saying that there was no dispute of fact as relates to the fraudulent over, uh, estimation of the value of Mar-a-Lago. This, despite the disputed material evidence, and there's no victim of the defendant's supposed fraud. Indeed, the, we've talked about this, no evidence of, uh, there's no evidence of, of a victim. And as I explained, became apparent from Ivanka Trump's testimony last week, it wasn't that those poor itty bitty banks were duped into giving preferential rates to Donald Trump. They wanted to because they were competing for his business and who would be the lucky bank to get paid 40 some odd million dollars in interest. They were competing for Trump's business. He wasn't defrauding them. But you know, Judge Engeron can see it whichever way he wants because he's got the tools. No insurance company paid a penny because he, you know, valued the assets at whatever. Had he overvalued the assets and then made a claim, like I've got my beautiful Tissot T-Touch watch. I got to show, I, I, I put a battery in this watch for the first time after, let me just get this out of here. After a, a decade, I got this on Canal Street in New York City. And what's totally cool about it, it's the coolest thing ever. It's a liquid screen, liquid crystal screen. It's got a compass on it. So check this out. It won't work laterally, but it's got a compass on it. It's got an altimeter on it. It's got a barometer. It tells you what the, if the weather's going to be getting worse or better. Okay. Sorry, that was all a long-winded way of saying this. If I were to tell my insurance company that this watch is worth 2000 let's just say something ridiculous, $5,000. And then I say, oh, my watch got stolen. Pay me out the $5,000. That's fraud. Trump, even assuming, let's just assume he said Mar-a-Lago is worth a half a billion and it burns down. He says, pay me my half a billion. And they do, but it was only worth 250 million. That's fraud. Bring it back up now. What is Elise Stefanik saying right now? Well, even if you are stupid and you believe that he overvalued Mar-a-Lago, which he didn't, but even if you're stupid and believe that, he didn't get paid on it. So what he did in fact do was even in the worst case scenario, I presume pay premiums on an overvalued uh, estimation of the assets and never make a claim. So Elise Stefanik is pointing it out. No insurance company paid a penny. These banks and insurance companies supposedly defrauded continue to do business with the defendant. Yet Angeron decreed before trial that he somehow committed fraud. Now he's holding a trial with no jury to determine how much of Tish James's requested quarter of a billion dollars in damages with no victims he will extract from defendant. How does this not violate everything that we consider holy of a free and democratic society?
And I made the funny joke last week. They'll say, yeah, oh, we're disgorging you for a quarter of a billion dollars, Trump, but your Mar-a-Lago is only worth $28 million. So we're going to take that 20, let's just round it down to 25. We'll take the 25 million off the quarter of a billion that you owe. And now you only owe us 225 million because we've, only, we've said Mar-a-Lago was overvalued. It's actually only worth 18 to $27 million. Communism. Angeron has made it crystal clear he doesn't care what defendant or his attorneys have to say. Indeed, Angeron illegally gagged them. Angeron told the defendant, quote, for those of you who are listening on podcast, quote, we are not here to listen to what you have to say, end quote. He told defendant's counsel, quote, I am not here to hear what he has to say. Now sit down, exclamation point, end quote. Angeron threatened the defendant's counsel. If he filed a routine motion for directed verdict, you better not, Chris. Angron and his staff, partisan Democrat donors. This is, this is what's amazing, by the way. You know, they're in the case in Colorado, the Judge Wallace, um, you know, there's accusations of political bias of the judge of the Colorado case where they're trying to take Trump off the ballot because she donated $100 to some, uh, it's not Act Blue, I forget what it's called, but she, she donated $100 to some activist organization that was created uh, in the face of the insurrection. So the judge, before becoming judge, but after her paperwork was presumably already all filled out, made a politically motivated donation to an activist organization that was predicated on the idea that January 6th was an insurrection. It was $100, it's a a pizzly $100 and whatever. This is not $100, and this is coming from the judge's clerk, the one who uh, is chummy chummy with Schumer. Oh, I didn't add it back to the screen. Who's chummy chummy with Schumer and uh, seems to be dictating Angeron's conduct. Listen to this. Angeron and his staff are partisan Democrat donors. As recently as 2018, Angeron donated to the Manhattan Democrats, even though Section 100.5 says judges shall refrain from making political contributions to a political organization, end quote. Section 100.5 also stipulates, the judge shall prohibit members of the judge's staff from contributing more than $500, quote, in the aggregate during any calendar year to all political campaigns for political office. And it only makes sense because you don't want politically motivated people weighing the, weighing the, the balances of justice. Allison Greenfield, that's her name, is her, her, his, um, I don't know, decision maker, his, his top clerk, served as Judge Angeron's principal clerk since 2019. In both 2022-2023, Greenwood donated, come on, in excess of $500 to political campaigns. This is, this is amazing. In 2022 alone, this is according to Elise Stefanik. I don't know this to be a fact, but it seems to be cited. Greenfield donated, quote, $3,335 in political donations to Democrat candidates and causes, end quote. The footnote, IBID, if we go back up, what's IBID? That's the same one as the one above. And that was um, an article from Matthew Boyle, Complaints Calls for Trump New York Trial Judge to be Disbarred for Excessive Political Donations, November 2nd, 2023. That's a lot of money, three grand. I mean, uh, I don't know what clerks get paid, but that seems like a lot of money. Even at uh, $150,000 a year, that's a lot of money. She already given more than 1000 in 2023. When President Trump's attorneys notified Judge Engeron, he responded by issuing the illegal gag order against President Trump's legal team. Well, I'm glad he didn't issue it against Elise Stefanik because I didn't know these details until I read this letter. Elise, well done. Let's let the rest of the world put this on blast. Torso nudie pics, wife tweeting out, son in the courtroom seemingly benefiting from nepotism, bias, judicial misconduct statements from eight years ago, and now we find out that his top clerk, uh, Greenfield, $3,335 in donations in 2022 and already up to 1000 in 2023. Angron has gone to gag and fine President Trump. Okay, we got this part. If anyone must have the constitutional right to speak out against the judge, his staff, the witnesses, the process, it's a defendant going through a process he believes is politicized and weaponized against them to gag the defendant is un-American. Uh, even the ACLU is getting involved in the uh, other case there. I'm just going to go through this a little more quickly. Angeron put his judgment in serious doubt by issuing a summary judgment citing as evidence of fraud that the Trump organization said Mar-a-Lago was worth between $426 million and $612 million. The Associated Press reported that top Palm Beach area real estate agents said the club's sale, the club's, quote, sale of a billion dollars or more would be possible. I was there. It's amazing. Angeron ridiculously found a, a low uh, 18 to 27 million. Any Zillow search shows that nearly 20 acres, there was a one acre lot, two acres that was selling for 100 million. 
Um, yeah, it's worth exponentially more than that. Okay, Angron has had his... Uh, what do we got here? And Judge Angron had in his hand the sworn deposition of Palm Beach real estate agent Lawrence Moans, who said the Trump Organization's valuations were, quote, reasonable and below my estimate for the market value of the property each year, end quote. Moans was asked in his sworn deposition about what sort of buyers would purchase Mar-a-Lago, and Moans responded, quote, I could dream up anyone from Elon Musk to Bill Gates and everyone in between, kings, emperors, heads of state, but with net worths in the multiple billions. The judge wrote, quote, obviously the court cannot consider an expert affidavit that is based on unexplained and unsubstantiated dreams. Engron apparently doesn't understand that the experts aren't dreams. Another example of him is bad judgment. Yeah. Engron's bizarre and biased behavior is making New York a laughingstock. Agreed. Former Southern District New York federal prosecutor Andrew McCarthy criticized Trump, recently said that he views this whole New York justice system as fraudulent. Okay, let's, how much is left here? Okay, not that much, so we'll, we'll get to the end. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Okay, we did that. Okay. Section 102, a judge shall respect and comply with the law and shall act at all times in a manner that promotes public confidence in the integrity and impartiality of the judiciary. Angron has grossly failed to do this. Commission's sanctions against Judge Angron are necessary to bring back credibility to our great state's legal system. All Americans, including political opponents, must receive due process and equal protections under our U.S. and New York constitutions. Engron's disdain for President Trump and his politics are evident, and the commission must take corrective action to restore a just process and protect our constitutional rights. Engron must recuse himself from the case. The case is so much bigger than Trump. Yada, yada, yada. They're trying to railroad a billionaire. Uh, he's the leading presidential candidate. Just imagine what he could do to all New Yorkers. No, not, not, don't imagine what they could do to all New Yorkers. Understand what they have done to other New Yorkers who don't have the means of Trump to defend, who don't have the bullhorn of Trump to raise awareness, and who don't have people paying attention to it in real time to publicize the injustice. Do you know how many people they've railroaded and locked away? This is why people ask me, like, I've changed my mind on the death penalty because I have no doubt the system has screwed as we, we, we're not even seeing only the tip of the iceberg. We are seeing only one case, maybe. One of the biggest cases. January 6th or another. They've done this to countless people for countless years. And now the public is only starting to realize it. And some don't care because they think they will not be up against that wall at any point in their future. Oh, judge Engron's lawlessness sends an ominous and illegal warning to New York business owners. If New York judges don't like your politics, they will destroy your business, your livelihood, the livelihood of your employees, and you personally. The commission cannot let this continue. And then we got that there. Okay. And Eric Trump was out giving an interview the other day, and he raised an amazing point. These, these, these stupid commie bastards, I'm sorry to say it like this, these commies, Leticia James, Engron, Oh, we're gonna we're gonna screw Trump. Let's 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 shut his business down. Let's pull his licenses. Let's liquidate his ad. Do you know how many people Trump employs? You, you commie idiots are not just punishing the object of of your of your hatred. You're punishing families. How many employees does Trump have? Thousands. Oh no, but it's for the greater good. It's for the greater good. Oh. 